hit that like button just like Tyson. What's the word, family? Hey, man, check this out. Do y'all know the definition of demon time? No, I don't know it neither, but I'm trying to come up with some type of reasoning for demon time because it's a lot of stuff going on and we got to take care of this. We got to nip this in the bud. Now, I came up with this. I find it funny that all of a sudden kids are doing these heels and they're doing lean. And now the demon time is coming to the forefront, right? It's, uh, these drugs are being more and more uh, affordable and they've been found throughout more than one hood in America. Now check this out. I got a story to let y'all hear and I'm going to come back with more commentary. So check this out. Breaking news to begin this midday. An arrest has been made in connection with the worst mass shooting Indianapolis has seen in more than a decade. This arrest comes just over 24 hours after that devastating gunfire on the east side of our city. Our Rafael Sanchez is joining us this midday with what we know about the suspect and what led to the arrest that was announced just over an hour ago. Rafael. Uh, Lauren, good afternoon. We are getting new details by the minute. This was a massive Metro Police operation that really worked around the clock it, to make this arrest from beginning to end. Some 62 Metro Police officers were part of this investigation. The 17-year-old a male arrested in this case is a member of the family that was found dead inside the home at 35th and Adams on the city's east. Now, y'all hear that? A member of the family. You know, Killed how many people? Five people of his own family? God damn. Y'all tell me that ain't demon time. I don't know what demon time mean. But let's continue to listen. Side. Here are the details that I can confirm at this very hour. The motive for the mass shooting, still not known. We've learned that police did recover a handgun. I'm told the arrest happened early this morning. The teen was arrested on two initial criminal charges of murder and attempted murder. Those charges will likely change when the Marion County Prosecutor's Office actually files charges at some point. The office, at this point, the Prosecutor's Office, is only confirming that IMPD made an arrest. Now, because the teen is looking at possible murder charges, a state law would not require the 17-year-old to undergo a traditional waiver hearing from juvenile court to adult court. So this teen more than likely will face murder charges as an adult. He'll face those charges directly. No charges, though, have been made or decisions have been made on any formal charges Yes just yet. Now, this is all happening as area ministers have been on a Zoom call for the past 25 minutes discussing their role in addressing the spike in violence in Indianapolis. You're going to be speaking. Wow. 17-year-old killed his entire family. Let's go through the list, man. Among the dead was Kizzy Childs, which was 42, Raymond Childs, 42, Elijah Childs, 18, Rita Childs, 13, and, um, Yara Hawkins, she was 19. She was also pregnant. Demon time, man. What makes people kill like this? What, what's with the bloodlust right now going on in the community? Y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think about this. Somebody killed a whole family. And I heard the reason for him killing this family was because he had a father that stood on his side and he told him, hey, man, you can't break curfew to go out and hang out with your gang buddies and these girls. And this is what he got in return. He got his whole bloodline wiped out by his bloodline, which is very sad. Now, check this out. We're going to another story that's all about demon time. All demon time stories and about murder. Some of them involve sexual deviants, right? You know, um, some of them Definitely involved sexual demons. Now, we got a story coming out of Kalamazoo about a pastor. His name is Strick Strickland. Now, see, that's weird to me because Strick Strickland wasn't strict enough on himself to stop him from doing things to put him on his list. Now, check out what Strick Strickland is accused of doing. A former pastor who was charged with sex trafficking teenagers is now allowed to live out of state pending trial. Strick Strickland turned himself in this morning to the Kalamazoo County Jail and was released hours later without He's... having to post a cash bond. 
Ooh. News 8's Susan Samples reports that the judge said that Strickland is not a flight risk. Susan? That's right, Brian. Judge Richard Santoni pointed to Strickland's surrender to state police this morning as evidence he's unlikely to run. That's in part why Santoni set the 37-year-old's bond at $500,000 but made it personal recognizance so he did not have to put up cash to get out of jail. Santoni said the former pastor at Kalamazoo's Second Baptist Church can, pending trial, live in his native Mississippi. That's where he moved when state police began investigating him two years ago. Strickland's attorney says his client is working at a horse farm to support his eight kids and wife who is pregnant. Prosecutors charged Strickland two weeks ago with criminal sexual conduct, human trafficking, and child sexual abuse, accusing him of paying four teenage boys for sex. Paying four teenage boys for sex, father of eight. Then they put his wife, they say his wife, like she's a good, wholesome wife that probably didn't know nothing about this. But this story got some crazier twist to it, man, because Strick Strickland was paying those boys to have sex with his wife while he watched. Tell me that ain't demon time, bro. Strick Strickland was paying these boys to have sex with his wife while he watched. Not only that, he tried to have sex with a couple of boys. They turned him down, but they really did enjoy sleeping with his wife. Now, these boys range in all type of different ages, man. They range in all type of different ages. This guy's 38 years old and a pastor. If that ain't demon time, I don't know what the hell is demon time, right? But that's not the last story I'm going to tell y'all about. So I want y'all to comment in the comment section how y'all feel about Mr. Strickland, okay? This last video that I'm gonna play for you guys, it's a little bit long, but um, there's some shit that's unbelievable. Last but not least, do you know the rapper Uzi Marcus? No, you don't know him? Well, guess what? I don't know him neither, but he got a brother that was on Demon Time, and um, I'm gonna let this speak, because this speaks value. This guy killed two women and got on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or whatever hell live he was on, but he was next to the bodies, right next to the bodies as they laid there dead. And he started talking. And this is what he said. Now, I'm going to give y'all this. I'm going to tell y'all the, uh, the scenario because YouTube won't let me show this. But he's standing there with a woman's feet. You can see his face and his body, and he's standing there with a woman's feet poking out. She appears to be dead or unconscious, but let, I'm going to let him speak. Hey, that's the last time I'm going to see y'all, bro, on Instagram. He's more worried about Instagram. Pray for me. Pray for him. Pray for him. Okay. Praying that you go to hell. Me and the cops are going to blaze it. Said he's finna shoot out with the cops. He's sitting there looking in the camera, casually, laying next to a woman. He touches her. Realize he got blood on his hand. Setting up. Throw it down. He said the woman tried to set him up. Said his brother and the woman tried to set him up. That ain't damn time. It's the last time you're finna see me on Instagram. He's pointing a gun right now, just pointing it around. I'm gonna show y'all. If I can. You bitches try to set me up. Ozzy Marcus and Shuddy P trying to have me killed, dog. You see the woman laying there dead? Ozzy Marcus want to have me killed, nigga. Try to send this bitch at me. Play with me, guys. They got this bitch around it. Hey, this nigga Uzzy Marcus and Shady P trying to set me up, bitch. Uzzy Marcus, Shady P. Oh, they got the bodies laying there, man. He's filming the bodies. Filming the bodies right now. Tell Uzzy Marcus he next. 
I'm two women. I'm just trying to set me up, nigga, with the bitches, nigga. Police gonna come in. I'm gonna die today. Check him out again. Police gonna come in. I'm gonna die today. That's what he said. He's on live. While all of this occurred. Right? That ain't demon time? Let's get past this a little bit. Because there's more to this story. Remember, don't say no. Somebody called him. You're saying it's over, he but it's up. over for this nigga. But this might be our last time seeing this nigga. Hey, this 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 your last time seeing me bust. Keep that motherfucker bust down, nigga. And or at least police responded to that incident around 12:42 a.m. in the overnight hours. We want to give you a look at what that apartment looks like right now. You can see that the windows on the back side of the apartment where the suspect had barricaded himself, those windows are completely blown out. The grass, uh, or rather the glass, is still crackling there. Now, uh, police, Vacaville police, responded to a welfare check call at Rocky Hills Veteran apartments here and uh, a woman called to report that a man was inside that apartment possibly armed and um, we later found uh, KCRA3 we found uh, that video of a man live streaming himself on Instagram I watched it myself Walter uh, it is too graphic to show on live television but in the video you could see two uh, unconscious women they appeared to be very badly beaten and bloody as well unconscious and uh, in terms of what we know about the suspect, uh, we know he is 29 years old from Santa Rosa and is wanted for uh, felonies, including domestic battery assault with a deadly weapon. Now, when officers did arrive on scene, the suspect barricaded himself inside that apartment. A SWAT team was deployed and negotiations with the suspect were unsuccessful. The entire complex here um, in Vacaville was evacuated and we're told that gas was deployed to try and get the suspect to emerge from inside the apartment. Now, eventually officers did enter. They found the suspect in inside. They apprehended him using a taser and the man was taken into custody at around 8.30 a.m. this wait, wait, morning. Wait, wait. Hold on. Uh, the two women who Hold were uh, seen on the live stream. They apprehended him with a taser? Can y'all believe that? They actually apprehended somebody that had a gun with a taser. So it's possible that that can happen. You can bring somebody in that has a gun and you don't have to bring them in in a body bag. What y'all think about these demon time stories that I just told y'all? I want y'all to hit me in the comment section and explain to me why is this going on? Or has it always been going on? And we just now getting a look at it because of the internet. We can see how crazy people are because of the internet, man. Because news can travel from one station to the next station within seconds. So hit me in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think about all of this.